everyone, and welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium, where tonight the North Quincy Raiders will host the Braintree Womps. It's the Raiders' opening night here for the 2023 season. My name is Jonathan Kaleri, and thanks for tuning in to this edition of QATV Sports. I'm being joined by Martin Dunham up here in the booth, and Martin, just as I say that, we're going to pause to, uh, for our national anthems. So we'll come back to you in just one second. So I mentioned I was being joined by Martin Dunham up here in the booth. And Martin, uh, last week North Quincy traveled down to Easton to take on the Oliver Ames Tigers. And the initial kickoff did not look good. It was run back by the Tigers for a touchdown. But after that, it was all North Quincy, and they ended up winning 35-6. to So a pretty dominant victory for the Raiders. Yeah, they played extremely well last week. Uh, the Raiders have an extremely large senior class. I think somewhere 25, 26 seniors. Uh, it's a motivated group. Uh, I remember when they first came in during the COVID lockdown that July when we were able to get in the weight room and lift. It was a group that was always together in large numbers, uh, extremely motivated. And I know that these guys are pumped up, ready to have a great year. Braintree High School last week, they went, uh, they had a home game and they defeated the Hingham Harbormen 20 to 16. So a nice victory for Braintree at home last week to get the season going uh, against a usually tough Hingham team. All right, Jordan Mahoney will kick it away for North Quincy. And it's going to be fielded up at the 20-yard line by Sam Garrity, a senior for the Womps. And getting over there quickly for North Quincy was number 81 on the tackle. That's Tommy Wirtz. Tommy Wirtz with the great play. And uh, Tim Toland as well on the uh, kickoff team made a nice tackle. Uh, we'll see a lot of Tim Toland tonight on the defensive side. He's a free safety. He's only a sophomore. Uh, had an interception last week down at Oliver Ames. Uh, athletic kid. Uh, sees the game really well. All right, Braintree comes out in the shotgun. Pass by Ricky Dever. Their quarterback is complete over to the right side. That's Caleb Parson Gomes over to the right. And Gomes is going to get up to the, let's see where they mark him down, at the Qu North Quincy 49. Braintree last week against Singham threw a lot of uh, perimeter screens, looking to get the ball outside fast, and then they hit on some deep home run shots. Uh, Braintree uses some tempo here, see if they can throw the Red Raiders off. So quick first down there for Braintree. And Gerald Stones, excuse me, is the uh, quarterback number six for Braintree. I misspoke on that first play. And Stones complete over to the left side. Parson Gomes again on the reception. Gets up to the North Quincy 42. Both teams are going to be very happy to throw the ball tonight. They're going to use the short game. Hopefully it'll open things up deep. Handoff up the middle for Braintree. And it's going to mark him down at about the 40. James Curry on the uh, on the rush. Nice shot by the front line of the Red Raiders. Number 
Uh, 54, Michael Finney, and number 34, uh, Michael Nista, both in on that tackle. Creates a third and one. Stones is going to keep it himself. Running over to the right side, has the first down anymore. Across the 30-yard line. And he's going to get tackled and brought down there by Ball number 11. By it's Dan Hudak. Quarterback, Gary Stones. Nice job there by Stones, creating something out of the pocket. Again, the Womps using tempo here. Here. First down. Mark him down at the 27-yard line. And whistle blows down on the sideline. See what the call is. Neutral zone infraction. Red, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Offside. All right, so as you heard that, it's a penalty against North Quincy. If there was one downside to North's win last week was uh, 13 penalties. Uh, a lot of excitement. These guys looking to get after it. Uh, but that's one area I'm sure the coach staff is looking to clean up. All right, so brings up a first and five now for the Womps. Hand off over to the right side. That's Curry again on the carry. He tips toes to stay in bounds and fights his way forward for a few extra yards inside the five and out of bounds at the four. It was a nice run there by James Curry of Braintree. Showed some nice balance. That'll Took a couple hits, to was goal. able to stay in, uh, tiptoe to the sideline. It's going to be line. first and goal from the four now for Braintree. Stones in the shotgun. Gives it to Curry once again. Curry trying to fight his way forward, and they're going to say he's down maybe inside the one. Curry to the one. Second and goal from the one yard line. Nice stop there by the Raiders. Let's see if they can get another one. And so the ball is inside the one-yard line, so second and goal now. Curry again, sidesteps to the left and goes in for the touchdown. The Womps come down quickly Braintree. and put six points on the board. Ranger with a nice job there. They had a little fullback lined up behind the tight end. Did a nice job kicking out. Offensive lineman pulled around to lead period. through, open up a good hole for Braintree. The uh, and they're going to open up pretty quick here. First minute and a half. Take a look at the replay real quick as they're setting up for the offense. As you can see right there, Curry sidestepped. was going to go up the middle, but saw the hole to the left. Took it for the six points. This feels similar to the script that Braintree had last week. They jumped out really fast on Hingham at home. Might have been 20 to nothing or 20 to 6 uh, early on in the first half. All right, Gerald Stones kicks it up and through for the extra point. So with 10 minutes and 30 seconds left to go here in the first quarter, Braintree comes down, scores, and they lead 7 to nothing. Be good to see the Red Raider, or the Raider offense rather, come out onto the field. Um, as we'll see, they'll be led tonight by Mike Galligan. He threw for 250 last week, three touchdowns, uh, and the important part was that he didn't turn the ball over. He had no interceptions, and that's always something that is a positive for the coaching staff, no turnovers. Got a couple of dynamic kick returners back uh, for North. I believe it's Nate Sampson and Marquise Rodriguez Smith, uh, two of the fastest Raiders, uh, and both start on the defensive end, both corners. Uh, but they got speed to burn, and if they get an open seam, they can take it Number to the house. So I believe Stones for Braintree was a transfer from CM. And he kicked for them last year. Okay. Well, in that extra uh, point, so you can see very it was, talented athlete. I say it was a nice extra point. So, and it's a deep kick there, and it's going to go all the way back to the five-yard line where Rodriguez Take Smith takes it. Three, and a nice tackle downfield there by Braintree. Try to look at the number. Looks like it's number two down there. Fifth, Sam Garrity. The Sam Garrity, one of the key Braintree players to watch, had a touchdown last week against number Tingham. 13, uh, does a great job in their special teams unit as well, as you can see. Uh, made the tackle pretty much right away. No yards after contact, no uh, slip tackle. Your quarterback for the Raiders, number 17, Mikey Galligan. See the Raider huddle there. Mikey Galligan leading the huddle out for the Raiders. He's going to be flanked by Jordan Mahoney in the backfield. And go three wide receivers up top. Galligan looking to pass on first down. Has a man downfield, and it is incomplete. 
was looking downfield there. I believe that was for Ania Panariti. for number 88. And Panariti got deflected there at the last second by number Dan De Silva. Dan DeSilva there a little run there. action there. It was just off the mark, but it was a good throw there by Galligan. Right in the space to Panariti. Uh, just missed a connection. Bring up second and we'll see the Raiders. They'll like to air it out this year. Mikey's a very talented thrower. He's an intelligent quarterback. He understands defense. He knows the game. Uh, and he leads this offense well. And we're going to get three receivers here to the bottom, to the short side of the field. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. Galligan, quick pass is complete. It's Cam Sampson on the catch. And Sampson's going to get up to the 20 yard line. Nice quick throw, try and get some rhythm, get some yards, uh, try and make it a, th a third and manageable. Cam Sampson had a huge game last week down at Oliver Ames. Three catches, 159 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, him and Galligan have a good connection, and they connected a, a multiple times on deep bombs last week. Call it a three-yard gain on that play for the Raiders. So third down and seven now. You go two wide receivers to the field. Looks like they got Dan Hudak, uh, running back receiver, as the H back. They take the pitch to him. Galgan in trouble. Set up a screen. Passes complete oh, ben to Ben Hudak. Hudak. Number 21. First down and more for Hudak. Going on the sideline. Crosses midfield. And he gets down to the Braintree 44 yard line. Great run there by Ben Hudak, as we'll see in the replay. Ben Hudak, ben senior Hudak. running back. He was hurt last week. Couldn't play, but. He was definitely motivated and fired up, ready to play this week, get back onto the field. And you can see there uh, some of the talent he has. He's got some speed. He's a tough running back, too, uh, in between the tackles. So he's a nice addition for the Raider offense this week to have back. You can see him explode down the sideline there. That was Hudak. Uh, and just great job there. Made a couple men miss and finally got knocked out of bounds there. Again, at the Womps 45-yard line. So first and 10 now for the Raiders in Womp territory. That was Mahoney in motion. Galligan going to try to keep it himself. He does. Gets across the 40 and falls forward. Late flag thrown on the play as well. Calls his own yeah, we got two flags here. There's one on the near sideline too. I'm not quite sure what either of those are for. 80-88. They mark Galligan down holding. at the... 88. Yeah. Galligan got down to the 36, but again, you heard the going to be a holding penalty. And it looks like it was going to be a hold at the 39. North Quincy, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. All right, so with the penalty, it goes back down to the 49-yard line. So tough break there. North Quincy was going to have a second down and about one, and instead now they have first down and 14. I'm curious to know the, the official on the near sideline here threw his flag. And then he picked it up afterwards. So I'm not sure if there might be a sideline warning or something. But looks like that's what it might be. So fortunate the Raiders there didn't get flagged up for that as well. So as I mentioned, first down and 14 now after the penalty. Galligan trying to get out of harm's way. Three people chasing him. And he just throws it out of bounds. Nice job there by Galligan to... Get it out of bounds and prevent the sack. Yep. Great decision there. The rush was on him right away instead of taking the sack. As you said, John, uh, smartly threw it away. Mike has excellent ability to escape the pocket and extend plays and make something happen that's not necessarily there. Uh, so Braintree is going to be keen on that. I'm sure they have a plan to try and keep him in the pocket. Uh, last week he made a lot of big plays rolling out of the pocket and then coming back to the other side of the field. Second down now for the Raiders. Galligan again being chased out of the pocket. He's going to give it all over to Cam Sampson. I think Sampson thought he was going to block for him instead. A little mis miscommunication there and it falls incomplete. The Braintree defense does a really good job there. Extremely aggressive as you saw on that play. Um, it's almost pro style where they just lined up 
six, seven guys in the line. Nobody was in a stance. Uh, trying to create confusion up front. Try and confuse those offensive linemen. Uh, last week, Oliver Ames kind of did the opposite. They dropped back and they wanted to force North to throw. In exchange, Mikey was able to kind of make some plays out of the pocket and create some uh, space outside. As I looked at replay again, it looked like um, Samson saw three Braintree guys running at him and he tried to run before he had the ball. Uh, and that's what made him drop the ball instead, unfortunately. Can, as you can see, and we got five Braintree players all standing up here and a lot of movement. Marker. Gonna have a false start a against foul North procedure. Quincy. Red. So another five-yard penalty for North Quincy. We bring up third and 19 now. And they need to get to the Braintree 35. Braintree playing extremely soft here. So and do we have another flag? Braintree coach is out onto the field. So there's another flag down over at the 44 on the Braintree sideline. That's Braintree coach Lee Carlson. You can see the wonder frustration it, on his face there. wonder if it's there. a neutral zone maybe. We have an unsportsman on sideline. White, 15-yard penalty. Still third down. Okay, well. Still third down. It's not a. That's a big break for North Quincy there. I know that some of the sport sportsmanship rules and penalties are definitely points of emphasis for the past couple of years for the officials. Team. I don't quite know what happened there, um, but we saw North a few plays ago. Looked like they got warned for being too close to the field. Um, I wonder if the same thing happened to Braintree. There's a line, a blue line, that's kind of difficult to see on the turf here, but you got to stay behind the blue. Uh, otherwise, technically, it's a sideline penalty. Well, it was a dead ball foul, so it's only 15 yards. It's not an automatic first down. So it brings up third and four now for North Quincy. So they just got a nice break there. We'll see if they can convert. Rush again on for Braintree. Galligan looking downfield, and it is oh. incomplete. Pass was intended for Nate Sampson. He just couldn't hold on. Nice defense down there as well by Braintree. Uh, by the defensive back there, I believe it was Sam Garrity down there. Let's take a look at the replay. Uh, Sampson was right there. As you can see, they flushed Mikey out to his right side, though, to his throwing side, but he only had one option. It was so close. Nate almost had that. That would have been a great grab. That was Reads a fourth and short, though, and uh, the offense is still on the field, so it looks like North's going to go for it. That was Braintree's Ryan Medina on the defensive stop there. We'll right, as you said, Martin, it's fourth and short now, fourth and four, and North's going to go for it as they're at their Braintree 39. This is prime hard count territory. Let's see if they try and have them jump first. Braintree corner on the bottom here. Very close to being in the neutral zone. Galligan looking downfield, has Sampson, and touchdown, North Quincy. Nate Sampson got past his man. It looked like he might have fallen down as well, but Sampson went past it. Galligan found him, and North Quincy gets on the board. Great job, and that's a little bit of flash from Mike Galligan. The ability that he has to make plays and extend plays outside of the pocket. Nate Sampson does a great job taking advantage of the defender. I think his corner slipped off. Mike did a good job just floating it in there, giving Nate a catchable ball, and Nate did the rest. After the kick, we'll take a look at the replay, uh, as you can see what happened there, but we'll watch the kick here as number 27, Al uh, Alvin Nicola, comes out for the Raiders, the sophomore kicker, and that's up, and it is good. So North Quincy comes down and answers Braintree, and at 7.44, again, we are tied at 7, and we'll take a look at that touchdown replay now. Um, that uh, Mikey Galligan found Nate Sampson. Yeah, once again, flushed out to the right side, his throwing side, and you can see corner slipped. It was a great job by Mike to be able to just loft that in there. The Raiders are going to have some opportunities throwing the ball. Braintree looks like if they're going to blitz everybody, they're just going to go man-to-man -man across the board, and North's got some pretty good athletes, as we've seen 
uh, early on here. Nate Sampson, Cam Sampson. Um, North's got a lot of receivers on the bench that they rotate in as well. So I think North's going to like their matchups in man-to-man. -man. Uh, definitely some opportunities for some deep throws, and I'm sure they're going to throw some quick stuff as the game goes on as well. Try and take those free yards. On well, left, Quizzy did the good job there of taking advantage of a 15 yard unsportsmanlike penalty against Braintree, and they make them pay with the touchdown. All right, Mahoney kicks it off, field at the 20 yard line by Sam Garrity. Garrity going down the left sideline, has some space. North Quincy giving pursuit, and finally they're going to bring him down, but it's going to take three or four North Quincy Raiders to bring him out of bounds. Garrity gets all the way up to the North Quincy 45. It was a nice run back there by Braintree's Garrity. He's made some nice moves and some tight space there up the sideline. It's going to put Braintree in good field position here at the North Quincy 45. Yeah, Braintree's got a uh, core of talented receivers as well. Uh, Garrity's out there a little bit. Caleb Parsons Gomes uh, is one of the receivers to watch out for as well as we get a run play. Yeah, Sam Garrity gets the ball right back. Got the ball in motion, and they're going to say he's down at the 40. Gain of four. We'll see. This this is turning out to be a game, maybe of a uh, game of stops. Whoever can get the most stops might win tonight. Uh, both teams moving the ball here pretty effectively. Hand off up the middle. That's James Curry. Flag thrown on the play behind the play. Probably going to be against Braintree from where it was thrown. We'll see what it was. I didn't see who it was. I think somebody was diving to make the tackle, and there was a hold. Holding. White. Might have been 54, Michael Finney, who had the initial penetration and just slipped up on the tag. It looked like he was grabbed from behind there. Penalty against the Wamps. So good break there for the Raiders. Let's see if they can Holden. capitalize. Going to back them up to the midfield. Set the ball back to midfield. Second and so One of the new adaptations this year. Uh, not in play for that particular situation but holding penalties now anything behind the line of scrimmage holding wise is now just marked from the line of scrimmage which is nice so kind of avoid the bizarre first and like 25s that we've <laughs> had in the past <laughs> right. if the hold occurs five yards behind the line quick pass there by Braintree and is over to try to get the number there looks like it was number 19 Sean Kennevin a little hitch route there from Braintree a little stick route gets five or six and then they get a few more yards after the carry there. And off again to Curry. Another flag thrown on the play. Number 15, Curry on the carry. They're We're going to mark Curry down at about the 32. Raiders gambled there. They sent some pressure. Holding. White. Holding. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. We're going to repeat third down. So another hold, and again, it's going to go back to midfield, I believe, again, and it does. Raiders and uh, Coach Ryan Craig being aggressive on their defense as well, sending a lot of guys, trying to create some pressure, trying to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands a little bit quicker. And going to try and get a quick substitution here. All right, so third and 15 again for the Womps back at midfield. Stones looking downfield, has a man, and it's complete to number 19, Sean Canavan again, and that's going to be enough for a first down. Fit that in a tight window. Tim Tolan was almost able to get his hands on that. Good rush as well from the Raiders from number two, Taylor Marquez. Ball at the 33-yard line. Braintree quickly comes to the line. They look to the sideline for the play. Again, looking downfield down the right sideline. Has a man open. It's complete at the five-yard line. Pass and that's complete. Caleb Parson-Gomes. First Caleb and goal now Parson -Gomes from the five. the five. He had a couple big plays last week. Braintree trying to attack. Tolan deep down the middle. They sent two deep threats. Down the seams there in hopes that maybe they could look them off one way and they fit it just in. Look for a power play up the middle here again from Braintree. They brought an extra back in. Handoff up the middle to Curry. 
Ooh. And nice job there by Number North. Five, it's going to be a loss of one on the play. No game. Number 77, Number Mike Ekpobi. Huge hit. Tackle. Running back from Braintree. James Curry tried to bounce outside and just ran into Big Mike, and he went right down. The Raiders again going to go a little bit heavier personnel. Noah Baker checking, Baker checking in. North Quincy trying to get some men off the field. They just do. Actually, Braintree takes their time now, so they had some. I'm sure they're going to try and power it again. This is a bit of a tendency if they have the back in. Oh, they're going to pass right as I Quick say pass, that. pass, and did he hold on to it? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Braintree. Pass was complete to Leo Bresciani. It was a good throw there by Stones. Threw it night low where only his receiver could get it as well. And Braintree did a good job there throughout the game so far. The few snaps they've had with that little H back in there has been a run play, so nice job changing up their tendency. We're going to see Stones kick again. Number six, Garrett Stones will attempt the one-point conversion. Number two, Sam Garrity to hold. High snap, but they get it down. The kick is up, and it is good into the woods behind the bus depot. And with 4.54 left to go, Branchy comes down and answers North Quincy. They take the lead back 14-7. to They might have to be careful. He might lose a bunch of kicking balls out there. That, <laughs> no, I know, that, right? that cleared the first net, and it cleared the second fence, it looks like, behind the uh, scoreboard into the bus yard. So Branchy did a good job in that drive. They had a couple third and longs, a couple long yardage situations that they were able to convert on, and they did a good job of, once they got it inside the 10 again, they punched it in. Ladies and gentlemen, spectators, if you are on the fence along the home stretch... Martin, I neglected to mention earlier, we've called this name a couple fence, times, but uh, Caleb Parson Gomes, uh, you might recognize that name. Well, he was a Quincy High transfer uh, moving to Braintree this year, so that's why you might recognize that name, and I believe it was the same number, number five as well. Um, so, making his... Uh, 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 presence felt here against the Raiders already. All right, long kick goes into the end zone, and North Quincy will take the touchback, and, and they'll start at the 20. So, good job there by Rodriguez Smith. Hard as a kick return to kind of run backwards onto the ball to then run forwards to return it out, and then in NFHS, once it hits the end zone, it's a dead ball as it is. So, uh, good job there by the Raiders. They'll take it at the 20. Offense looking to get back on track here. A couple penalties, but they did a good job uh, making a big play. Was that on fourth down they, they scored to uh, Samson, I believe? Uh, I think so, yes. Yeah, yes. so good job by them to convert. Look for them to move the ball down the field again. Yeah, it was a fourth and four, I believe, that they scored that on. Enough up the middle for North Quincy. Nice run here on first down. Getting across the 30 up to about the 32-yard line. That was Jordan Mahoney. 10, Jordan the first Mahoney. run from Mahoney today. He's a big kid, uh, very strong, especially low body. Uh, when he gets his legs moving in space and he gets going downhill, he's tough to tackle, as we can see there. G gain about 12 on that first down run right up the middle. Good change of pace there for the Raiders. He had a great sidestep at about the 25-yard line to go around a defender and picked up another seven yards with that. First and 10 now from the 32. Mahoney again, and this time he's gonna get wrapped up quickly. Mahoney Anthony Volpe the right there to bring him down and wait for some other WAP players to come and help out. No gain. Nice job there by Braintree. They clogged Second up the lanes on the inside. For the Raiders. We have Ben Hudak checking in now uh, for the Raiders. Again, so the, they're gonna go into a the two running backs. Probably see Ben again feature as an H back. We'll see if maybe they, maybe another off tackle play, or another pass here. Give Mikey some extra protection. I'm not sure if our microphone's picking it up, but you can hear a, a lot of hooting and hollering. And it's actually the, the Braintree fan section that's in the south end zone. Uh, They're cheering on the, their team just coming across a short trip across the town line there. Uh, so they're cheering on the team. They always have a big contingent when they come. Uh, and they travel. A right, quick pass there is complete over to the right side. There was Pinarini, excuse me, that was number 21, excuse me, Ben Hudak on the catch. 
Missed who made the tackle there for Bringy. That was a good tackle out in space. Had it had Ben been able to break that, he probably would have had a first down or pretty close to first down yardage. Um, tried to sneak him right into the flat there. Braintree was alert to it though. This is going to bring up about a third and eight. Braintree has been showing a lot of blitzes, especially on third down. He'll see if they send the house again. They initially had the ball closer to the 35, but they mark it right at the 34 instead. So third and eight now for North Quincy. Under three minutes to go here in the first quarter. As we see, Braintree is going to go into everybody kind of standing up. They're all moving around. They're going to try and create confusion up front. Big rush there. Nice job by Galligan to get away from it. Trying to get to the near side of the field. Cross the 40. Great move there. And he steps out of bounds. He's going to be just shy of the first down. A flag thrown as well. Looks like we're going to have a late hit against Braintree. Galligan making something happen again out of the pocket. Great job by Mike. But Galligan went out of bounds at the 41. So he's one yard shy. But again, we'll see what the, the penalty is. You have a dead ball foul, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. 15 yards will be added on to the end of the related run. It will be a first down. All right, so as you heard there, with the 15-yard penalty against Braintree, it'll go all the way up now to the 44-yard line. So a nice run and then add 15 onto it, and North Quincy is now in Braintree territory. Great job there by Mike to extend the play. I'm sure that the coaches on the sideline are going to be looking at uh, different ways to help the offensive linemen be able to block some of these pressures that Braintree's throwing at them. And basically, they're just trying to confuse. Depending on how North is blocking up front, some teams will just kind of do it like a zone style where they just kind of block to one side, or some teams will do a man style where you block a specific man. Uh, we'll see how that evolves throughout the game. Galligan looking to pass. Plenty of time, plenty of time. Looking down the middle of the field, and it is incomplete. I believe he was looking for Cam Sampson, but also down there for North Quincy was, I believe that is Gavin Brown, number 32. Uh, 33. Or 33, excuse Will me, Conley. Will Conley. Yeah, both guys in the area there. Uh, Braintree showed some pressure there, but then ended up backing off, uh, which gave Mikey some extra time in the pocket. And Mikey's equally dangerous if you give him time back there to dissect the defense and let him uh, throw. He's got quite a strong arm. Uh, he's not a big kid. He's probably like six feet, six one maybe. Um, but he can really sling it with the best of them. Right, second down now for the Raiders. Jordan Mahoney gets the handoff, and he's going to go nowhere quickly. Nice play there by Braintree to bring him down. Looked like it was number 42 for the Wamps to come up to make that play. Michael Whitman, or with him, excuse me. It's going to bring up third and ten for the Raiders. Oh, okay, I heard a whistle. I didn't know if somebody maybe called time up, and then they just rolled it back in play there. Yeah, no, I heard the whistle as well, so I wasn't sure what was happening. So uh, no, no flag thrown on the play there. talk about some of these big guys up front later that are going to be doing a uh, good job protecting Mikey. Uh, seeing is up front, but first year varsity starters, uh, lots being asked of them uh, to protect him and then uh, do some good work in the run game. Uh, but they're big kids, they're physical, and they're aggressive. Galligan trying to step in the pocket, but he cannot. He had pressure from the outside by Matt Mar 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 Marmay, excuse me. Marmay pressure from the outside, and they got brought down in the middle. And it's going to bring up now a fourth, and North Quincy looking like they're going to punt. It looked like he might have just been getting ready to throw it downfield. He stepped up to avoid that initial outside pressure. Uh, just couldn't get it off. We'll see Jordan Mahoney now back to punt for the Raiders. Mahoney's got a good leg if he can get some time and get a foot on it. Dave Pressman will get credit for the sack there. High kick there by North Quincy. Fair catch called for, and... Oh, they got to get on it. Get on it. North Quincy, wow, what a bounce there. A bad bounce for North, a great bounce for Braintree. It bounced about 10 Ball yards backwards all the way down to the 32. For the 
It was good initial coverage down there. They were all over the return, and they did a good job not to interfere with him. They got pretty close. They did a good job not to interfere. Just an unlucky bounce there. Um, I think it was Panariti that was alert to jump on that one. Do you spot the ball at the 32-yard line? And off to James Curry, number 15, junior running back for the Wamps. Curry on the carry. And Curry's going to about the 37. Just a little inside run there that lets Curry kind of read the inside holes and see if he can cut it up. He can bend it back as well, but decides to keep it right in the middle there. Gets a gain of four on first. Curry will get it again. This time bouncing to the outside. Has some space down the sideline. And nice tackle there by North Quincy's Tim Tolan to push him out of bounds. But nonetheless, it's a big first down there run by James Curry up to North Quincy 44. And Curry looks like he's a pretty big back. He's got some speed. He's got some muscle on him too. Does a good job bouncing it outside there. And Tim Tolan uh, with a touchdown saving tackle on the sideline. Stones is going to keep it himself over to the left side. And great job there by North Quincy. Number three, Marquez Rodriguez-Smith with the tackle. Fought off the stiff arm to bring him down. As we'll see the replay, and that's the end of the quarter as well. That could have been awfully close to a face mask as well. You don't see it called as much on the offensive side. Um, but you can uh, get a hands of the face there. Pretty close, but nice job by Smith. One-on-one -on -one in space. Only gained a couple. Rays did a pretty good job there. They s snuffed it out. Branchy tried to pull a fast one. They've been handing off, handing off inside, and Stones just kept it on his own there. All right, so as I mentioned, that is the end of the first quarter play here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, and Braintree with a 14-7 lead over North Quincy. Yeah, Braintree from their end, from their perspective, they've been off to a good start. They've driven the ball down the field. They've been able to convert on a lot of third downs and long yardage situations. Uh, North Quincy just missed on a couple connections so far. Um, both teams, I'm sure, they'll be looking to cut down the penalties. They've kind of stalled the offensive side, and it's kind of extended drives uh, from the defensive perspective as well. I'll remind our viewers you can log on to Quincy Access TV's website at qatv.org for program schedules, membership information, video on demand, live streaming, and much more. So again, qatv.org. And for all of our high school sports coverage, qatv.org slash sports. All right, first play of the second quarter underway here. Stones, quarterback looking to pass. Flag thrown on the play behind it. Stones running over to the right side. And nice tackle there by Panariti. And Stones will get brought down at the 40, but we'll see what the penalty is. I think that'll be coming back. M Michael Finney again. Defensive tackle with a nice job. Got initial penetration. Spot. 7-7. Seven, seven. You got initial penetration there. A couple of the Raiders got in. Taylor Marquez, uh, defensive end, I believe he's lined up as. Uh, he got initial pressure as well. He's going to bring it back to the 48. Braintree again. They're going to go two receivers here to each side. Second and long now for the Womps after the penalty. And there's movement on the line by both teams. So we'll see. It looks like to be a false start against Braintree. Penalty marker. That'll nullify that play. We have a dead ball foul procedure. White. Five yard penalty. We're going to repeat second down. Another good break there for the Raiders. We were running a jet sweep. And Jordan Mahoney was all over that. He's going to come out and get a breather here. The Raiders are going to try and get some fresh legs out there. And we'll see if and Quincy. They're trying to call timeout. Yeah, there's confusion as to how many people were supposed to come off. And so. like I said, North's going to call a timeout to make sure they get things situated and they have the right amount of men on the field there. 
At yeah. the very end of the play, they mounted like three guys running off the field, and they weren't sure if it was supposed to be three or two or what. Yeah, good timeout, too. You don't want to give back any penalty yards that uh, Braintree just had, uh, especially in personnel. They haven't used any timeouts yet so far. It's their first one. Uh, really important for the defense here to settle in, try and create, you know, stop them here, get the ball back in good field position. It's about a second and 23 ish here so I'm sure the Raiders will be keen to make sure that they're going to eliminate any of the quick stuff from Braintree to try and keep it in front of them the Braintree again going to spread out they're going to go two receivers each side and send a man in motion Stones looking to pass looking looking fires downfield and it's complete through traffic and staying on his feet after a hit all the way up to the 35-yard line. And that's number 19. We've called his name a few times before, Sean Canavan. Stones with another good throw. He stepped into that one. He threaded it into a narrow seam. Fit it right in there. Tim Tolan again almost with the play. Uh, coverage is pretty tight there for the Raiders. And then we're going to get another procedure of penalty here. Raiders are saying they thought it was on Braintree. So unlike in the college or the NFL game, there is no free play per se. Once there's a neutral zone penalty, the play is dead immediately. Neutral zone infraction. Red, five-yard penalty result will be a first down. Against the Raiders. It's a five-yard penalty, and that will result in a Braintree first down. That's going to be a first down there for Braintree. And they're going to get right up to the line here. They're going to try and get the playoff. All right, so they've mocked the ball at the 30-yard line. James Curry with a carry right up the middle now for the Womps, and he's going to get across the 20, and we'll see if he get up to the 15-yard line. Curry. Looks like he is. Another nice run there for Curry. Tackle there by Tim Tolan and Paul Glenn also in on that play. It's going to be a first down, though. It's a good, strong run from Curry. Quickly come back to the line. Curry will get it again. Bounces to the left, and he's met there by several Curry. Raiders. He'll get one, maybe two on the play. Good job there by the front line of the Raiders. You see Michael Finney, number 54. Paul Glenn was in there again as well for the Raiders. Uh, Noah Baker, number 50. Um, did a good job. Looks like they marked him for a one-yard gain there. Up to the 14-yard uh, line, and... I think they got him again. Some, some more confusion down there on the field. And it looks like this is going to be against North Quincy again. Zone infraction. Five-yard pound there. For, re, repeat, second down. My tie, my tie. Approachment against the Raiders. It's a five-yard penalty. Curious to know what the Braintree coach has to say to the official here. He got the five yards, so I'm not quite sure what he can be upset yeah, about. I know, right? First and goal to go. Now, I know the PA said first and goal, but that's going to be second down. Pass is incomplete. Flag thrown on the play. Pass is incomplete, but there is... Yeah, it's second down and four. And again, but flags thrown on the play. Holding. Can you have it from the on white from the spot of foul? Repeat, second down. Yard All right, the flag is at the 12-yard line. Ball at the 19. Line the game is the uh, That's right. And then actually, Martin is one of the things where he was behind the line of scrimmage. So it goes Warriors. back to the line of scrimmage for the penalty there. Stones again, another quick pass, and it's incomplete. Was looking for Parson pass Gomes. For five. Could not bring it in over there. The Nate coverage was Martin Nate Sampson. Yeah, Sampson did a good job. He was right on top of that there. Range to try a little quick slant, just try and get five, six, seven of those yards back. Going to get them now in the third and 13. North Quincy going to be looking to make a stop here. Third and long, 10 minutes to go. 
Stones pass complete over to the right side. Parson Gomes gets it. And a nice tackle there by North Quincy. Again, that was Sampson again on the tackle. The and Gomes gets up to the 13-yard line. And Braintree's got a few guys coming in and out here. I'll be curious to see what Stones like on the PATs. This might be field goal range for them. And it looks like they're going to set up for it. So they're going to spot it at the 19-yard line. That's where they'll hold it. Excuse me. So 29-yard field goal for Garroyd Stones. Plenty of leg, and it looks like it is just wide to the right. Plenty of leg, but you're right, John. Pushed it to the right. So good job there by the Raider defense. Got the stop that they needed. Uh, benefited from a Braintree holding penalty, and then they were able to hold him. So great job there. Big play by Nate Sampson on that third down. Uh, kept Parsons Gomes in front of him, I think, if he, if he was the receiver. But he did a great job in space. He held his legs in space, made the tackle so he didn't get extra yards. Uh, Raiders going to be looking to charge down the field here. They're going to spot it at the 20 now uh, since it was inside the 20-yard line. All right, so defense holds. We'll see if the Raider offense can come out and put some more points on the board. 9.17 left to go here in the second quarter. Oh, wow, Sampson hands the ball off to Jordan Mahoney, and he had nowhere to go Mahoney as coming in there quickly was Braintree to bring him down. Yeah, the pressure was there immediately. Mahoney got hit right as he took the handoff there. Good job to hold on to that. Oh, unfortunate break there for the Raiders. See if they keep it on the ground again, try and get some of the yards back, or they might try and uh, go through the air. You made the play there for Braintree, but they were in right away. Good job. and It was Matt Maramai, number nine. Yeah, he's lined up. He's like an outside backer here. He's up at the top. He's going to go same formation, but they're going to change sides, and Braintree's creeping up again. Galgan again rushing out of the pocket, and he just throws it away. In this area was Nate Sampson. For number seven, yeah, good, Sampson. good job there by Mike. He, it was almost like a throwaway. He kind of threw it in the area so he wouldn't get the intentional grounding call. Um, good job by Mike to escape that pressure. Braintree's going to continue to bring the heat. And they do a good job whether they stand guys up or whether they put them in three-point stances. Those linebackers are active, and they're sending from left, right, middle, short side, wide side. They're sending it all over the place, uh, trying to keep the Raiders off balance. See the huddle there as they break offensive lineman Brody Baker is at left tackle. Noah Baker is at left guard. Michael Finney is the center. And we'll get the right side here after the snap. Mikey Galligan, quarterback. Again being pressured. Pass is incomplete. I believe he was looking for Rodriguez Smith down the sideline there, and it was. And could not connect. Just out of the outstretched hands there, Rodriguez Smith. Uh, I think he still would have been short by a couple of yards, uh, even if he had caught that. Uh, but a good, good throw by the Raiders. Good throw by Mikey uh, to the outside, kind of where only where Rodriguez Smith could catch it. It was either he caught it or nobody was getting that. Uh, Jordan Mahoney will come in now to kick the ball away. Braintree's not going to send the house. They're going to send a few. Line drive kick there, and this time it takes a North Quincy bounce. And it takes another nice little bounce there for an extra couple yards, and it's going to be down there by Rodriguez Smith at the Braintree 45. Down by number three, yeah, Braintree didn't Marcus send as many people as they have on defense, but they did a good job on the outside. I think it was number 11, Anthony Volpe. He lined up a little bit wide, and he got a run head start uh, towards the punt team and was able to kind of affect the timing on that a little bit. So it's going to be first down from the North Quincy 40, uh, sorry, the Braintree 45-yard line. It'll be a quick screen outside. All right, pass is complete. Parson Gomes made a man miss. And 
Man is down on the field for North Quincy. The trainers, were, they were on that right away. Spot the ball down at the North Quincy 47. for the uh, injured player Caroline there. Emerson, we have it was uh, Dan Hudak is the man down the field for the Raiders. The right at the North Quincy oh, coaching Emerson staff and the uh, training staff. You uh, Brendan Gano, the trainer there for North, they, they were out there right away uh, to be able to help him out. Hopefully it's nothing serious, especially with uh, how scary some of the injuries have been of late in football. We saw Aaron Rodgers uh, the other day with his Achilles. Um, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it looked like he, um, his foot got caught in the turf there, Martin, as he went to turn and chase the, um, uh, the ball carrier. And uh, definitely was a, um, uh, definitely, definitely tough. So, well, while we have a second here and, um, so Hudak gets up there, and you can see he's limping on his right foot there. Number 11, Dan Hudak. So he's going to be okay. While we have a quick second here, I want to remind all of our viewers you can log on to Quincy Access TV's website at qatv.org. For uh, program schedules, membership information, Video on demand, live stream, and more. So again, qatv.org. Second and two for the All right, so bring up now a second down and two. Again, ball at the North Quincy 47. Quick pass oh. over the middle and threads a needle there to Sam Garrity. I'm not sure how Garrett Stones found that, but he did. Uh, the Raiders are right there too. I think he j just lost, might have lost sight of the ball, but did Stones can let it rip. I've seen a couple throws where he's put in, the, fit in the tight windows. And off to Curry this time. Curry breaks away from a couple tackles, but not the second. And he's going to get to the 30-yard line. If it was Cam Sampson. Yeah, good job too by the defensive end down there, Ben Wallen, job number 14. Uh, also in on that play. We'll see. I'm sure at some point they might try to attack the bottom with Cam Sampson. Nope, they're going to go to the field here with screen again. Parson Gomes on the catch, goes to the outside, gets across the 20, the 15, and will get brought down at the 14. Sometimes you'll see teams where if there's an injury or a substitution, they might go after that specific substitution after. So, uh, that's why I was anticipating some at the bottom, but Braintree is taking advantage of the cushion that the Raiders are giving on the outside. They're just throwing quick passes outside and letting their athletes go to work. Quick pass over to the left side to number 19, the tight end, uh, Sean Canavan. Well, we'll take a little RPO action there, run action to the right, and then they had a little stick route right over the middle, and they're just reading the linebacker. If he flows to the run, they're going to throw that pass. At the three-yard oh. line, and nice great job. job there by North Curry. to prevent Curry from getting into the end zone, and it's going to be a play. loss of two on the play. I think it was Brody Baker, Paul Glenn that got the initial hit, and then the Rays did a good job. They rallied up to make that play. They got it down back to the five now. Braintree's going to stay in a spread formation. They haven't brought in the second running back yet. And just before the play, the far side judge blew ben the whistle. So penalty on the play. We'll see what it is. Oh, uh, White lined up in the neutral zone. 
prior to the snap, White lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, we're gonna repeat Ball's second shot. down. Against the Wolves. It might have been on one of the receivers there. Usually wide receivers are checking with the officials if they're on or off, if they're on the line. Usually the officials give you some leeway or they'll warn you. Um, so that's interesting there. Stones over to the side and Nate Sampson almost jumped that ball to intercept it, but it's complete to Caleb Parsons Gomes back to the five. Ah, he was almost had that ball too and he did a good job to at least hold on right at the end there hold on and then the rest of the defense is able to come over and make that tackle big third down here for North As we tick down clock still running around about five minutes here in the f first half Samson was a half second behind that ball Martin intercepting it just a, a step behind or at least knocking it away if he hadn't yeah. intercepted it Rangers is going to go big here in the backfield, they're going to get two running backs and an extra lineman in there. And they're going to hand it off to Curry, and he go. No, he did not get into the end zone. It looked like he had gone in, but they're going to say his knee was down at the one, or inside the one. And Braintree's going to stay out here with their offense. See if they get an extra running. Well maybe, well, maybe I'm mistaken. It's not a running back, but they got three backs in the backfield leading the way. All right, fourth and less than one. They give it to Curry, and this time, so I didn't see a signal. Touchdown, I didn't see one. I, I guess I, he's I in. I didn't see a signal from anyone down the field. But I'm. Unless one of the sides, uh, I, so I can't see the near side judge unless he held up. But I, I, didn't, say, see, I didn't see anything from the far side. Yeah, no, I, I was just that what was I was looking where I for, and. Well, I guess it's a touchdown. That was a tough run there from Braintree. North had him right at the line there. It was a close play. All right, an extra point there by Stones is good. So with 4.18 left to go here in the second quarter, Braintree will increase their lead 21-7. to Braintree showing some good balance in that drive. Stones had a couple nice throws in the space. Got some good runs after the catch. Hit some primitive screens, and they... Uh, ran the ball pretty effectively as well, so they're really mixing it up, really making it tough for the Raiders to kind of key in on one aspect. Now, look at the Raiders. Hopefully they can get a good return here. Uh, the last kick from Stones went into the end zone, so the Raiders didn't really have a chance to go get it. Um, like, like we mentioned before, the Raiders have a couple dangerous guys back there with Samson and Rodriguez Smith. Hopefully they can get a chance to run it out. Yeah, it looks like they are going to get it, and tough break there, and uh, Marquez Rodriguez-Smith was running up, had a running stop, but couldn't hold on to the ball, and he jumps on it, and they're going to have the ball at the 15-yard line. I don't know whether the Stones planned it or if the, the wing kicked up a little bit on that play, but it got about halfway there, and it just died out about halfway, and I don't think Smith was <laughs> anticipating it dying so quickly there. Did a good job to jump on it. But unfortunately, it's going to back up the Raiders. They're going to be at their own 15 to start the drive. We have a missing bank card. Belongs to Elena Altiar. Come to the announcer's booth to collect see with 416 here. The Raiders are going to try and see if they can attack downfield maybe. Try and get a score here before the half. They did defer the opening toss, so they will get the second half kick. Galgan has to hold the pass and then threw it again. That was to number 10, Jordan Mahoney, but Mahoney can't hold on to it. Oh, tough break there for the Raiders. Mahoney was out in space. Raiders did a good job last week, and they're doing a good job tonight. They uh, Quincy did it last night as well, where they kind of utilized the running back out of the backfield, try and get a good matchup, maybe a running back on a on a slower linebacker out in space with some with some room to run onto it. Anthony Volpe, number 11 for Braintree, came in, got his hands up to kind of uh, disrupt the initial throw there uh, from Galligan, and he had to wait one second. He had to put just a little bit more air into that, and I think that's what also threw Mahoney off. Brings up second down and 10 now for the Raiders. Again, ball at their own 15-yard line. Galligan rolling out, looking, looking. 
Throws it downfield and it's complete at the 25 yard line, right at the first down marker. Will Conley on the reception as we'll see here on the replay. Nice job there by Conley. Galligan was rolling out to his right there. Brintry sent pressure off the edge and looked like they might have sent the, an extra linebacker as well. Will Conley does a good job coming across the field, getting in the vision of Galligan. And gets a nice catch, as you said, John, for a first down. Big play to keep the drive alive early. They spot him down at the 26, so an 11-yard gain there for North Quincy. Nice job there by Galligan on that play to be patient and, and wait for someone to get open. And like you said, Conley was able to get some space and come back and pick up the first down. That's it. Mikey stood in there, too. He was feeling pressure. He might have taken a hit on that one, but he stood in there and it delivered a nice throw with hand, uh, pressure right in his face. Galgan again goes back to Conley over to the left side, has some more space, and bowls over a defender there, and he'll be right at the first down marker again. We'll see if they give it to him, and we'll take a look at the replay. Conley's a good little athlete. He plays in the slot. He's, as we can see here on the replay, shifty kid, um, showing some strength there as well. Putting his shoulder pads down, looking to get that first down. Uh, Braintree played a little bit softer on the outside there, so... Gave Mike a nice easy throw, Conley a nice easy catch, and then it allowed him to create in space. Galligan looking, nice coverage by Braintree. Galligan still looking, throws it downfield, and it is complete to number 13, Cam Sampson. He came back to get the ball. Just slightly underthrown, as we'll see in the replay, but a huge play there by North Quincy. Oh, he was double covered too. Braintree flushed him out, but they only sent three or four there on that play. I think they only sent four, which gave Mikey plenty of time to keep his eyes downfield and make something happen, and that's kind of the downside if you don't pressure Mike. Does a good job getting out, creating, keeping his eyes downfield. The receivers do a great job. Cam Sampson there, great job keeping the play alive. All the way down to the 13-yard line for the Raiders. The yeah, handoff looks like the tail in Marquez there. Raiders try to go a little temple there, maybe try and get Braintree off. Um, the Braintree defense is up to the task, and they're going to make some wholesale subs here, try and get some fresh bodies out there. That'll be second and nine for the Raiders. All right, they're going to give Marquez a gain of one on that play. Up to the 12-yard line, second down and nine now for North. 142 left to go. Still plenty of time. North Quincy with two timeouts remaining. Yeah, plenty of time, two timeouts, but definitely important. They're looking to punch it in here, especially getting that second half kickoff. They need a score. Yeah, Nate Sampson spread out wide by himself to the right. They fake it to Marquez. They give it up the middle to the ball carrier, and nice run there by North. Number 21 on the carry, Ben Hudak. He's going to get to the five-yard line as we take a look at the replay. Nice counteraction there from the Raiders. Number 50, Noah Baker right there. Yeah, Great right, kickout the block the on the Braintree defensive end. Seals the outside there. Allows Hudak to cut up inside. That's going to get it inside the 10 down to the five. It's going to be third and short, though, but Raiders got plenty of options here. They can run or they can pass. Their clock's running down. They got two timeouts still as well, so no rush here for the Raiders. They can still pick up a first down as well, and Marquez with a handoff, and North Quincy quickly calls a timeout. We'll see where they mark his forward progress, and they're going to say to about the seven-yard line, so a loss of two. Tough break there, but fortunately for the Raiders, it is not a uh, goal-to-go situation, so they can still get a first down inside the five. Looks like it's maybe the three they can get a first down, or the four. I don't know if you are able to have the down and distance there, John. I can't tell what the yard marker across the field there. It kind of looks like it's in between. Yeah, it looks like they need to get to the three for the first down. Well, the Raiders will be looking for a quick game pass here, I'm sure. Looking to get out. We've seen them uh, do a good job utilizing running back out of the backfield as well. So depending on who they have back there. They might motion them out or flare them outside and try and open up something in the middle, perhaps, if they don't go with the running back. All right, so it's going to be fourth down and four for North Quincy from the seven-yard line. So as we had mentioned, 
They can get to the three for the first down. North, again, did call their timeout. They have one timeout remaining. Yeah, so they're going to go three three wide receivers, excuse me, to the near side. They got Cam Sampson, Nea Panaridi, and Will Conley to the right. And Nate Sampson's by himself on the left. Sampson rolling out, still looking, looking. He fires into the end zone and oh. incomplete. Was looking for number 33, Will Conley. It was a great throw there by Galligan. Took a little bit of a risk, but he threaded the needle. And Conley couldn't bring it down. Galligan kept that play alive as long as he could, and he played with the sideline there. He just got it off. It was a good effort there by Mike, and uh, Will Conley was right in the area there. Uh, great job, and then he had uh, looked at Cam Sampson in the back of the end zone as well, also there in the area. A good job there by Mikey to try and keep it alive. Uh, but unfortunately, the Raiders are going to come up empty-handed here. Look at see. It looks like Braintree's just going to kneel this out. Raiders only have one timeout, and they're not going to have enough time to stop it here. Nobody's calling timeout, so I think that's going to be the end of the first half, John. Should be. There was, it should be. Braintree yeah, it was, was 15 under seconds. 20, it, was, yeah. it was under 25, so... Usually the, the usually the ref kind of lets the teams run off if, I was if they know the times are going here. I well, was kind of afraid they, they were going to make him run another kneel down. Well, I was wondering if Braintree was waiting for North to start running off the field. They were all lined up to ready to maybe, you know, get a free play there and catch North Quincy off guard. But nonetheless, so we are at the half here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, and North Quincy was trying to score there on that last play, just comes up short. So at the half, Braintree with a 21-7 lead over North Quincy. We're going to take a quick timeout and back to second half coverage and just one moment. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would please remove yourselves from the fence. 
along the home stretch and get into the bleachers so that everyone can enjoy the game. Thank you. People that are on the fence, on the home stretch, will you please remove yourselves and get into the stands, please? Tides on the fly, and we're taking it this year. Welcome back, everyone, to Veterans Memorial Stadium. We're at the half. Braintree leads North Quincy by a score of 21 to 7. Real quick, we'll run down some stats. For North Quincy, quarterback Mikey Galligan, 7 of 16 passing for 151 yards and one touchdown. For the rushing side of the things, Mikey Galligan has two rushes for 13 yards. Jordan Mahoney has four for 10 yards. And Ben Hudak has seven yards rushing. Nate Sampson has one catch of 39 yards and a touchdown. Cam Sampson has two catches for 53 yards. Will Conley has two catches for 22 yards. And Ben Hudak, two for 37 yards. For Braintree, Garroyd Stones, 13 of 14 passing for 165 yards and one touchdown. James Curry has 13 rushes for 71 yards and two touchdowns. Stones has 12 yards rushing, rushing as well. Sam Garrity, one catch for 12 yards. Leo Bresciani has one catch for six yards, but it was a touchdown. Caleb Parson Gomes has six catches for 80 yards. And Sean Canavan, four catches for 60 yards. And that rounds it out for Braintree. Yeah, Braintree offense has been highly efficient tonight, uh, aided by great field position. Um, it's almost like kind of the tale of Braintree being able to have better field position so far. They're averaging getting the ball right around the 42 for North, whereas North, they're starting up backed up at their own 18 every drive. Um, so that nearly 30-yard difference, that's a big deal, and Braintree's done a good job moving the ball when they have had it. Uh, 13 first downs for them, so um, in the four drives that they've had, basically, they've been able to get the ball and then just kind of move it methodically, keeping the ball away from North. Uh, North will be looking to find some consistent consistency on the offensive end uh, as they start the second half. Uh, they only had seven first downs uh, on their four drives. Uh, but that last drive right at the end of the half, um, hopefully they can build off of that. Eight plays, 78 yards, they drove down. They just missed the connection right on fourth down at the end there. But uh, hopefully that's something they can build off of to open up the second half. 
It was announced during the halftime, but I wanted to make an announcement here as well. Um, Tony Green and John Green, Tony, the offensive coordinator, John, the defensive coordinator for Braintree High School, have uh, some Quincy roots as well. Tony was a former coach, former head coach at North Quincy, and John Green was assistant coach with both North and Quincy as well. Uh, John Green, uh, my TV teacher at Quincy High School back in the day, so a uh, shout-out to Mr. Green. And the wind knocked that over. The wind's been picking up here throughout the night as Hurricane or Tropical Storm Lee, whatever stage it's in now, <laughs> yeah. slowly at 18 miles an hour, moves up the east. All right, Stones runs back and quickly kicks it off before it falls off the tee again, and it goes into the end zone for a touchback. Stones has done a good job mixing up his kickoffs. So the opening, or his first kickoff, kicked it shorter, and Rodriguez Smith had to come up on it. And then when he came up, Rodriguez Smith on the second one, they booted it behind him for a touchback. And then when he moved back again, he kicked it shorter. So uh, Stones is an excellent kicker, and he's doing a good job being able to kind of mix it mix it up. And as we see the, the wind kicking up there. Yep. Do we have a QETV weather report, John? No, we do not have oh. the QETV weather report here today. <laughs> I'll have to get my, my phone out. Windy. <laughs> yep. Windy and cool. It's a, it's a beautiful fall night, though, temperature-wise. It it's cool, about 65-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Can't complain. And I have a procedure penalty. Yeah, it looks like, North, excuse me, it looked like Braintree. Someone jumped off sides and was in the neutral zone. Yes. Yeah. Neutral drone infraction. Defense. Five-yard penalty re result. It's no first down. I want to give a, a shout-out there to uh, QATV's Chris Potter, who sent me a screenshot of the QATV weather station. Uh, we do have a weather station at our studios at 88 Washington Street. 64.9 degrees. And... Um, East northeast wind at 5.9 miles per hour. Again, that's at that's in Quincy Center, so maybe a little bit different here. But oh, nice read there by Mikey Gallagher. There might have been some RPO action there. I'm not sure whether North reads it or not, but does a good job. They run action to the right and they throw to Will Conley. I think it was coming on the left side on a quick slant. Yeah, nice job by Conley. Everyone kind of stopped. They thought the whistle had blown or something like that, but Conley was still on his feet going up to the 39. I believe we have a replay here to take a look at it. Uh, so that one looks like that might have been a design play action. Uh, they hit Conley on that at least once last week down at Oliver Ames. It was a good job. Uh, he comes right underneath. Uh, Conley's quick in space as well. Uh, it looks like it might have been 88 Panaridi who was kind of over the top of that to help create a little rub. The Raiders are going to go three receivers down to the short side of the field again here. First and ten, Galligan pump fake. And running over towards Braintree's side of the field. Running, running, throws back to the middle of the field. Dangerous play, and it's intercepted. Actually, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Uh, so, yeah, and it was intercepted there by Sam Garrity. Good there play good play there by oh, Garrity. Alright. I was gonna say initially I wasn't okay. too sure. I thought the official was holding up that it was second down, but no, it was intercepted. I I didn't I was waiting for one of them to kind of signal which way the ball was going. Right. Uh, we waited a couple times for them to signal. It's just plays kind of proceeded. Uh tough play there. Mikey was trying to make something happen, but Garrity did a good job stepping in front of Panaridi. Alright, so Branger takes over at the forty four yard line. Hand off over to the left side to big number 15, James Curry. He's fighting his way forward up to about the 22. Braintree keeping on the ground here. We'll expect them to try and run it out a little bit. Uh, they did that last week against Hingham. They got up early. Similar score line at the half, and they were able to run it out at the end. Braintree in the first half had five yards of carry, uh, so they did a good job mixing it up with their pass game as well. I said the 22, correct myself, the 32 is where they spot the ball now. It's first and 10 for Braintree. Curry again up the middle. And he's going to push the pile forward to the 29-yard line. Yeah, Curry's a big running back, and they're going to lean on him here. Branch with a big offensive line up front as well. So we see Noah Baker checking in for the Raiders. 
Nola's played a little bit of defensive tackle. He's got an ability to play linebacker as well. Uh, one of the versatile athletes for the rated defense. Quick pass, and it was deflected at the line of scrimmage there. I believe that was Paul Glenn, number 84, who tipped it. Paul Glenn with a nice play, and Tim Tolan was right on top of that as well. Braintree hit that a couple times in the first half. They're trying to take advantage of that area between the linebacker and the safety with the quick little hitch route. Uh, great job by Glenn to get his hands up and deflect that. It's going to get a third and about six or seven here for North, or for Braintree, excuse me. Stones pass is incomplete. Great job there by Marquez Rodriguez-Smith. Great job by Marquise. He's just a junior. Uh, showed some flash last year as a sophomore. Special teams and some limited defensive play. He's one of the fastest Raiders out there. We've seen him on uh, kick return team as well. Uh, he's locked up a corner tonight. He did a great job last week as well for the Raiders. Branchy looks like they're going to try and go for it. All right, so it's fourth down. Ball to 29-yard line. Fourth and about seven. Good job by the Raiders. Branchy tried the hard count. Oh, I jinxed that. Yeah. It was like, look, it was Jordan Mahoney. He was trying to step up, and he just went just a little too far into the neutral zone. Oh, it's going to create Five a yard penalty. Short. Still fourth down. Yeah, it's still fourth. They're going to be fourth and one. They're going to bring in number 40. Brain tree is. That's Anthony DeVito. Uh, he's kind of their kick out back, their power back. I'm sure they're going to try and get Curry up the middle here. We'll see if the Raiders are able to stop him. They give it to Curry. And initially goes to the side, gets the first down and a little bit more as well. And they're going to spot him down at the 19 yard line. The Raiders got good penetration initially. Looked like an inside run. Forced Curry to bounce, but Curry did a good job. He bounced it out, and nobody was there for the Raiders, unfortunately, to be able to stop that. First and ten. So first and 10 now for the Wamps at the 19-yard line. Take the pass thrown over the middle. It's incomplete. Pass was intended for number three, Leo Bresciani. I don't know if we have a replay on that, John. So that looked like another example of that kind of RPO action there. As we see, the, we got a couple offensive linemen pulling here. So you see coming across, and Stones has got his eyes to the outside linebacker. He sees Panaridi step in. He tries to fit that slant in right behind him. A good read there by Stones, but good job by the Raiders to be able to disrupt that. I think it was Nate Sampson out there in coverage as well. Stones trying to get out of harm's way, and somehow he does, and he might have gotten back to the line Gerard of scrimmage. Stones. We'll see what it is, but nice job there by Gerard Stones. He was initially hit around the 20. Uh, 21 yard line, but I believe it's going to be no gain. Yeah, good job there by Stones to get back to the line of scrimmage. As you said, multiple Raiders had a chance and they were hanging on, but did a good job to keep his legs moving. To get third and 10 here. Stones pump fakes, throws over the middle, and touchdown. Sean Canavan. He's able to sneak down and get away from his man, as we'll see in the replay here. Oh, excuse me, there's a flag on the play. And that's actually a roughing the passer call, and that will be declined. Fortunate there for the Raiders. Stones pump faked. I don't know if somebody bit on the yeah, back. Yeah, personal fall, roughing the passer. That penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. 84. All right, so as you heard, that penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. The Stones has had a masterful night tonight for Braintree at quarterback. I think he's only got one incompletion still. Is that right, John? Um, I have him 14 for 18 now. 14 for 18. All right, so he missed a few here to start the second half. But and a good PAT kick as well. Now he's He's been the best player out there tonight. Uh, Unfortunately for North, um, with 8.52, it's 28-7. We'll see if Mikey Galligan can lead this offense back out and get down the field. Um, Raiders got a lot of talented receivers uh, we talked about earlier. Uh, Cam Sampson has some breakaway ability. Marquise Rodriguez-Smith, and Nate Panaridi, Nate Sampson. So the Raiders do have a lot of options. They're pretty balanced on the offensive side in terms of receivers and how they distribute the ball around. Will Conley is another option for them. Uh, so we'll look for the Red Raiders to pass it down the field. 
We'll see if Braintree continues to keep sending the blitz or whether they try and drop back and have more players in coverage on deep passes. All right, Mark, what does Braintree do here now? They, uh, they're they going to be kicking off from the North Quincy 45. Do they just blast it through the end zone? Do they kick it high and try to pin them back? What do you think they're going to do? I would just blast it through the end zone, make them start at the 20. So it's a line drive kick. They're going to feel that North Quincy does at the four-yard line. Will Conley on the return. And let's see, Conley is going to get brought down at the 25 and get the 26. Good return there by Conley. That was probably the cleanest kick the Raiders have been able to field today. You can just see some of the ability that these guys have. If they can get the ball in space, they can make something happen. I'm uh, kind of surprised that Braintree decided to kick it short there, considering they've been doing a good job pinning the Raiders back, starting uh, either at the 20 or inside the 20. This is their best starting position for a drive all night. So hopefully the Raiders can capitalize on this. I get a ball at the 26-yard line, first and 10 for the Raiders, 8.46 to go in the third quarter. So Raiders are going to top 28-7. you got three receivers to the field here to Galligan's left. you got Mahoney in the backfield as well. A little play action. Galligan rolling out. Still, and somehow gets away from a couple defenders, throws it, and it's complete to Will Conley at the 39-yard line. Nice job there by North. Galligan somehow snuck free and finds Conley for a first down, as we'll see in the replay. Uh, he's slippery, and that's what gives North a chance. Still, it's 28-7, but North's still got a chance here, especially with Mike, as you see, he evades multiple tackles here. Good job, Brody Baker, protecting the backside, number 66. Finds Conley. The receivers do a good job finding space and staying on the move for Mikey. So good job keeping that play alive. Good job by Will to get a first down. Can ball spot now at the 39 yard line for North Quincy. First and 10. So still plenty of time left in this game, too. Eight minutes in the third quarter. So uh, this game not out of reach for North at all. Mahoney with the carry, gets across the 40, put, put him down to 41. Oh. Brangie does a good job clogging up the middle. North's had a tough time getting some consistency on the ground. Uh, only about three yards of carry in the first half. Um, they had a couple big runs, but then they've had a couple. Brangie's done a good job a couple times, really sending the house uh, back and north up. Uh, good job by Mahoney. Wasn't much there in the middle, but kept his feet moving, got a couple... North's going to go two receivers. Cam Sampson to the right of Galligan's got an extra wide split. Yep, they're going to hit Mahoney. Mahoney went in motion, uh, but he caught it with his knee down. He's actually going to lose two yeah, yards on the play. It's tough, just a little bit in front of uh, Mahoney there. But as you can see, that's an area they're looking to exploit. If Braintree's going to bring those inside backers up, they're going to try and get Mahoney outside, hopefully with some space. They get uh, Samson out wide blocking for him. Some afraid third and ten here. We'll see if the Raiders can make something happen. Uh, I'm sure they're probably going to be in four down, four down situation here, depending on what they can get. Six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Third and ten for North. The brain is just going to rush through. They're going to drop everybody back. Galgan throws it downfield, and it is caught there. Another great catch by Cam Sampson. Aiden Lau was all over him on the coverage, but somehow Sampson brings it down. That was a great job there by Sampson. He's had a couple of awesome contested catches today. Uh, Brantry decided to drop eight in the coverage there and try to have enough guys to cover deep. Uh, Mikey does a good job rolling out, and he did a good job uh, staying, as we see on the replay here. He stuck in there. He took a hit at the end of this one, too. Paid the price for it, but great job there by Mikey, and a great job by Cam attacking that ball. All right, first and 10 now for North. Now in the Braintree side of the field at 32. Fake the handoff. Galgan set up a screen over to number 21, Ben Hudak. 
Hudak had a little bit of space and gets across the 30 up to the 25. Tackle there from Braintree by number 41, Justin Santiago, a senior. Nice screen there for the Raiders. They've hit uh, Hudak a couple times now on screens, but it was a good misdirection. They faked the jet to Panaridi, and they come back the other way to the short side. Nice easy throw from Mike. Uh, it's a good way to beat the blitz as well. Let the rush come up and then just dump it behind them. Michael Finney there, you can see number 54 was leading the charge there. Had a nice block and get a few extra yards for Hudak. So Finney, brings up Finney, the center for North. Uh, played a little bit last year in the offensive line. He's one of the leaders up front. Uh, Brody Baker, as we mentioned, is the left tackle. Noah Baker's up there playing some guard. You see, North's going to shift down here. They go from a, a wide bunch to a short bunch. Galgan faked the handoff, running to the right side. And surprise, was no hold call there. And actually, as I say, that flags get thrown. And we're going to have a hold against North Quincy. And the reason I could tell it was a hold there, Martin, I saw a shirt get pulled about a foot away from the, the Braintree defender. Holding. Offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. 1-4. One 1-4. Four. One four. We'll take a look at the replay real quick as... So as we can see here, it looks like a little... They're going to read it there. They run counter to the left. Mikey's going to pull it the other way. We saw number 52, Alan Guan, number 57, Ray Martial, the guard in the tackle on the right side of the Raider offensive line. So unfortunate penalty there for the Raiders. That's going to back them up a little bit. Uh, second and 13. All right, so ball again back to the 35-yard line with the hold. Four minutes and 50 seconds to go in the quarter. Galligan looking out, and he's trying to get out of harm's way, but cannot. Number 54 for Braintree coming up. Dave Pressman with the sack. Uh, I think he was looking for Ben Wallen, John. He had him deep. Wallen, John was able to beat the defense. Over the top, he was going towards the left corner of the end zone, but Mikey just couldn't get his hips turned to be able to throw that ball. Uh, good job there by Branchy. They flushed him out to his opposite hand side, so it makes it tougher for Mike to have to throw that ball. Brushman has been getting after Galligan all night long, uh, and that time he was able to bring him down. Branchy defense done a good job all night being able to mix it up terms of their pressures whether they have down linemen or whether they just get five or six guys standing up there all over the place we see we got five or six guys walked up here already six guys on the line and they're gonna show with the seventh they're gonna force Mikey to to the field here Galligan looking he's gonna have to run it instead comes back up towards the middle of the field and let's see where they mark him down it's gonna be about the 31 yard line by number 70 for the about fourth and Pendergast. eight. Call it nine. See, unfortunately, uh, nothing opened up downfield, so Mikey just took off on, on his own there. The so as you said, Byron's going to be fourth down and nine for North Quincy. Ball at the 31-yard line. Raiders are going to send Panaridi and Cam Sampson to the left, Will Conley and Nate Sampson to the right. Two receivers each side. Ben Hudak going to be in the backfield with Galligan. Galligan looking, looking. Has some time. Being pressured now. Making a decision quickly, throws it downfield, and it is incomplete. He was running out of room on the sideline there. And at the last second, he saw number seven, Nate Sampson, but they could not connect. Branchy did a good job there. Mikey was ready to spin it back to the field again and keep it going, but Branchy did a good job containing that. Uh, Sent in the house again. They played man coverage, and unfortunately for North, nobody was able to break open. Galligan threw that just before he went out of bounds as well. And as you said, uh, Branchy was pressuring him and he had nowhere to go. So turnover on downs for North Quincy at 2.38 to go in the third quarter. Branchy quickly hands it off now to James Curry. 
Curry running up the middle of the field, and he'll be right at the first down marker. I believe he'll have it getting up to the 42. Curry with a big run there. Looks like the tackle from the Raiders was from number 34, Michael Nista. Rachel going to stay in tempo mode here. And we're going to get a timeout. Looked like they had Raiders had some substitution miscommunications there, so they're going to gather and regroup here. With that last run for James Curry, he goes over 100 yards here tonight, 102 yards rushing on 17 attempts, and two touchdowns as well. In fact, great balance as well with Stones. He's at about 180 yards, I'd say. So uh, they've been doing a good job mixing it up, keeping that rated defense off balance and just super efficient. Stones is 14 of 18 still, is that right? So uh, just super efficient. They've been able to move the ball, get pick up first downs, keep the ball away from the Raider offense. That has shown flashes to be extremely dangerous when they get the ball. I want to thank our crew who's come out here tonight while we have a second, uh, doing a great job. Uh, getting all the shots and everything in the truck as well. Uh, down the field on our field camera is Brian Cox. Up in the booth on the game camera is um, Ryan McWade. In the truck, our director is Peter Doherty. Our engineer is Chris Potter. And on graphics is Anna El Torre. Back-to-back -back nights here for us at the stadium as last night Quincy High had their opening night uh, be beating Concord Carlisle by a score of 21-19. to An exciting game. Uh, with Quincy able to hold out. They improved to 2-0 and on the season to the Presidents. North Quincy next week uh, will be on the road at Malden Catholic before coming back here to host Cohasset on Friday, September 29th. All right, handoff there again to Curry, and they're going to mark him down at the North Quincy 48-yard line, and it's enough for the first down. Braintree's going to ride their offensive line here, try and grind out some clock. Quarterback now for Looked like a good job Gavin there. Maybe number, number 64, Charlene's Fong for Braintree. Did a good job lead blocking there. Gavin Farager, number four in the game, at quarterback for Braintree, but he hands it off to James Curry, and Curry does all the big work there all the way up to the North Quincy 20, where they mark him now, the 23. Take that back for us. Number 54 for Braintree, Dave Pressman. Uh, had a big game on both sides of the ball. has been huge for the defensive uh, effort for the Wamps as well. Going to keep it tight inside again. Good job, though, by the Raiders. They stacked that up well. No gain. No gain on that run there by Curry. Paul Glenn on the tackle for North Quincy. Alan Guan with a good penetration as well up the middle. Uh, he's a linebacker as well, uh, in addition to his guard duties on offense. Uh, Alan, might, he might be in a D tackle right now too. Uh, the Raiders are pretty flexible, and they got a couple guys that can kind of do linebacker and uh, tackle. Oh, nice job! And Curry fighting through that tackle, misses two tacklers, and finally coming up there, Ben Hudak wraps him up and holds him up and it's going to be a loss on the play we'll see where they mark him down it's going to be That's at the 28 yard line see if they uh, realize Braintree changed up quarterbacks here they got Gavin Farraher now see if this is a run situation here Braintree will have to run a play before the end of the third quarter here um, got about 22 seconds left. Ten seconds left on yep. the play clock as the back judge has put up his hand to signal that there's 10 seconds to go. And head coach Lee Carlson goes over to the sideline official and calls timeout with about eight seconds to go. Uh, well. <laughs> well, there was eight <laughs> seconds to go. We'll see where they stop the clock. Oh, well. I say, yeah, the official is going to come over and tell him to put some time back on the game clock there. Looks like six, maybe. They're trying to signal six seconds. He went seven, seven seconds on the clock. Okay, I can't see his thumb. He has one finger. I couldn't see the yeah. thumb. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know in the past, uh, when I was in the box, I tried to just get them to communicate it for the headset, and then you can just, like, communicate it down, makes it so you don't have to yell from the sideline. Right. With all the crowd noise sometimes, it gets hard to hear, but they'll get well, now they give him 7.7 .7 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Lucky seven. That's Branchy's first time out of the uh, second half there. We'll see if they bring Stones back in maybe for this third down. Or can't, can't find him on the sideline over there. No, they're, they're going to stay with Gavin Farrer. Farrer is just a sophomore. Um, but they still got some of their other big players in there. In the backfield with them will be number 22, Ethan Eli. Got Caleb Parsons going for Braintree out wide to the left here. He's been one of the big fa X factors for Braintree today. Our hand oh, goes job. to Sam Garrity. And nice job there by North coming up there. It was Ariel White, number four, on the tackle. And we'll take a look at the replay as that will be the last play of the third quarter. Great job there. North was all over that. Braintree went what they call end over, so they went two wide receivers on the line of scrimmage to the wide side of the field. Uh, Sam Garrity was the only receiver on the right side, but he was off the line. So when he came over, um, he had uh, more, way more offensive players on that side. Uh, Braintree, that's a play I think that they showed last week. Uh, North read that really well. They tried the jet earlier and they blew it up um, before Braintree got a penalty call on him. Um, second time again, North was all over that. So good job there. It's going to force a fourth and very long. All right, so the end of three quarters of play here at the stadium. Braintree on top, 28-7 to over North Quincy. Again, I mentioned North Quincy will be on the road next week facing off against the Lancers of Malden Catholic at MC. That game's on Friday, September 22nd. Then back here at the stadium against the Cohasset Skippers on September 29th at 7 p.m. Good challenge and schedule for the Raiders this year. Braintree is a, a good opponent to pick up in the Bay State League. It's super competitive. Um, Balding Catholic uh, should be pretty good as always. Catholic Conference team, you can't underestimate them, even though uh, North beat them pretty good last year. Um, Walden Catholic returns a lot, and then Cohasset is a perennial contender in Division, I think, Division 7. They ran out of, they realigned it again this year, but Cohasset's always very competitive no matter who they play. Uh, so good schedule for the Raiders uh, to prep them for a Patriot League play down the road. And speaking of tough teams, Patriot League teams are usually pretty tough as well, um, especially for North Quincy. They're going to have some tough teams, Slim South Hanover, uh, Situate, uh, so tough teams that they'll be facing up against. I so say the, the Patriot League, especially the Fisher Division, is top to bottom always pretty competitive year in, year out. But Branchy's going to line up here to punt. Stone's going to try and direct it towards the sideline. And he does a nice job. It bounces at about the 7 or 8 yard line, make it the 8, and that's where it goes out of bounds. So good directional punt there. Didn't give Will Conley any chance to bring it back. No, it was a low line drive too, but it was almost like the perfect punt. He had the forward roll with it, had it landed inbounds. Uh, so, unfortunately, it's going to pin the Raiders back. They haven't been able to get good field position all day. Branchy's done a good job keeping him back and forcing the Raiders to have to drive the ball on him. You get a good look at the Raider huddle there, the offensive line in front. See, so did a great job last week and then continuing to play hard tonight, try and make plays for this offense. All right, Galligan leads the team out of the huddle. Four receivers set for the Raiders. Hudak in the backfield. Galligan looking, he's in the end zone and he's gonna get sacked for safety. Uh, Braintree did a good job in that play. They showed their hand late. They tried to show like they were just gonna drop in coverage and a couple guys came up right at the snap. Uh, so, fortunately, the Raiders will have to kick back off the brain tree here as we start the fourth quarter. Looks like that might have been number 65, at least, on that play for Braintree. Nick Tuckus, the senior. 
Uh, I didn't see who else was in there. I think it was Owen Walsh was also in there for, for the Womps. Yeah, Braintree's had a good team effort tonight, both sides of the ball. Seen a lot of guys make plays and uh, good win against a Hingham team last week that always been pretty competitive on their side of the Patriot League as well. So Braintree off to a good start this year. So we're going to get a free kick. It's going to be from the 20-yard line. And they're going to bring up Brody Baker to kick this one. He handled kickoff duties last week for the Raiders as well. They got a couple guys that can do kickoffs. Uh, we saw Mahoney do the opening kick for the Raiders. Uh, Baker handled it last week. Um, Baker can also punt. Uh, we're going both ways. He's a defensive tackle, uh, playing left tackle, trying to protect uh, Galligan's blind side today as well. Uh, hasn't come off the field at all. All right, Braintree calls a timeout. And so teams will go to the sideline. Not sure if they had a substitution issue or they just wanted to talk something over there. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Uh, Lee Carlson came running out of the sideline calling timeout. And then got everyone over quickly to the sideline. Well, that'll be their second time out. So we get a good look at uh, Coach Greg Summers for the Raiders. Uh, Coach Summers comes over from Quincy High uh, this year. Uh, a lot of new coaches for the Raiders staff. Uh, Jason Spry, Dylan Meehan, a couple of the uh, new coaches. Uh, Dylan Meehan runs the offense uh, for Northeast, the offensive coordinator. Um, comes from, I think, Newton South, but he coached at Wisconsin for a little bit as well while he was in school. Um, but he's a good young offensive mind for the Raiders. Um, and then Coach Summers is coming over. I know he's done a lot of work with the offensive and defensive lines. He does a lot of special teams work uh, for Coach Craig as well. Uh, kickoff there after the safety, and Branches is going to jump on it at their own 45-yard line. Good little, it's like a squib line drive, but uh, Brody Baker did a good job directing that. And there was no brain tree returner there, so they just had to fall on it. Uh, it was a good job there by the Raiders special teams unit. You see the defense come back out. Uh, looks like they're going to try some different guys out there. Uh, looks like Will Conley is going to go to free safety. Uh, you see big Mike Ekpobi, number 77, he's running on the field. And penalty thrown by the back judge. Penalty marker. Have a substitution infraction. Five yard penalty, it'll still be first down. I think Quincy had, uh, excuse me, North Quincy had too many men on the field there. Five yard penalty. Well, it looks like both teams here starting to use some different guys, starting to trickle them in a little bit. Well, well Stones is back in here for Braintree. It looks like they might. He's trying to go for another score to get the clock running. All right, they hand it off to Curry over to the left side. Curry goes a couple through a couple tackles, gets tripped up, but still falls forward all the way up to the 32-yard line. So Rodriguez Smith got the initial trip up, and then Will Conley finished it off there for the Raiders, but another big run for Curry. So you see Cam Sampson there. He's going to come in. He's going to come back in the corner. Number 56, Joe Nista, he's going to come in at D-tackle. He's going to spell Michael Finney for a little bit. Finney's been going both ways for the Raiders uh, at center and D-tackle. Curry comes out of the game. Stone's pass over the middle of the field is incomplete. Was looking for number 19, one of his favorite targets here tonight, Sean Canavan, but it falls incomplete. Yeah, we got a flag. I think it's going to be pass interference. It looked incidental. Um... See, especially being thrown by the back judge. Yeah. Pass interference, 15 yard penalty added on to the end for the previous spot. It will result in a first down. Tough play there. Not sure that, uh, not sure there was much in that, but the, it was tough. I don't think the player got his head around, and that's why they called that. Stone's going to hand off. Curry's checked back into the game here for Braintree. And he's going to go right up the middle. Yeah, you can see him pushing a pile there up to about the 13-yard line. 
It's like 56. Joe Nista in on that tackle there. Him and his brother Michael have had good games on the defensive line. See, second and five now for Braintree. Good job there by the defensive end uh, or tackle. Looked like that was Joe Nista again. Coming down the line, did a good job chasing it down from behind. It's going to bring us third and short. That was Curry again on the run for the Womps. They mark him down at the 10-yard line. So third down and about three to go now. Braintree hasn't been um, slowing down at all either, Martin, as well. That the was probably the slowest they've gone actually <laughs> getting <laughs> yeah. in a huddle there. I, I know. All right, Curry again with a carry right over the guard, over to the right side, and he'll have the first down, and they're going to mark him down at the six. A little powerful run there by Curry. First and goal to go from so, the six. So we see uh, Raider defense uh, getting some new bodies in there, getting some fresh legs. It's, uh, number 28, Thomas Chan, come on. Uh, junior linebacker, outside linebacker. So you see Braintree here looking to punch another one in. And Curry in the backfield. They give it to him. And nice play there by North Quincy coming up to make the tackle was uh, Noah Baker. Noah Baker, uh, one of the seniors, he's still in there. He's been going both ways as well. He's been playing left guard. Uh, D tackle linebacker. Uh, he's a kid. He's uh, been on the varsity for three years. He's as a sophomore. He came in uh, on the offensive line and checked in for a couple games uh, due to injury. Uh, and on the defensive side, he's made plays all three years. Nice play. Second down. Stones lost the fumble. Or lost the ball, and he throws it away just before he gets sacked. Great pressure there by North Quincy. Uh, that was Paul Glenn. Nice Take pressure. Yep, nice play there by Glenn. See, it looked like they tried to seal him off to the outside, and he was able to force the play there. They're going to call intentional grounding there. Let's say nobody was in the area, and he was still in the pocket, I guess. So, break, good break there for the Raiders. It's going to back it up. Intentional grounding penalty is my favorite signal, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. Just <laughs> the, the two hands down. Just So that's, that's one of the <laughs> rules, too. They've been changing the intentional grounding rules every year, it feels like, for the high school level. Oh, nice job again by the defense. Looked like Ariel White Curry. got in there to make that stop on Curry. 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 He's had a couple big Raiders. tackles. He had a big tackle. In the third, at the end of the third quarter, and that jet sweep play as well. Uh, he's a good athlete. He's played running back. He plays some linebacker. Uh, gives the Raiders uh, some more depth. So we get a fourth down and goal from the 13. Just saw for Braintree number four to check back in. Gavin Farrer must be going back in at QB. All right, so as you said, it's fourth and goal, and they're at the 13-yard line. Farrer back in the game, like I said, James Curry to his right. Low snap. They do just to get it to Curry, and Curry goes nowhere. He's going to get brought down there by number 50, Noah Baker, and it'll be a turnover on downs. Good tackle there by Noah Baker. Good job turning it over on downs. Good job by the defense there. They had a couple different couple different guys coming in making plays throughout the end of that drive. So good job to hold them out. You got just under eight minutes left here. Uh, looks like we got the number one offense for North Quincy out there still. So we'll see if uh, Mikey Galligan can lead the Raiders back down the field. All right, 7.54 left to go here in the game. North Quincy will take over on their own 12-yard line. So 
send the man in motion they give to him. That's Conley. Conley trying to get to the outside and he's going to get a couple yards to play before he gets brought down by number 41, Justin Santiago. Good little run there by Conley. I don't know if we get a replay on that, John. Uh, it was a great block on the perimeter there. It looked like by number two, Taylor Marquez leading the way. We'll take a look at the replay. Create a nice alley up. That's Taylor Marquez. Does a great job. His defender just goes outside and Taylor takes him there with him. Will Conley does a nice job reading and cutting it up. Getting what he can. Mark him down to 18 yard line. Ben Hudak on the re, excuse me, on the carry this time for North Quincy. And they're going to spot him down at the, about the 22 yard line. He'll be just shy of the first down. Looks like that might have been number 75, Demetrius Hawley, on the tackle there for Braintree. There was a hole, and whoever made that tackle for Braintree did a great job in the hole. One on one tackle on Hudak. See, third and one, Mikey's got uh, Galligan's got three receivers to his left. He's got Nate Sampson on the bottom. Hudak, nice run there. Boyd's a couple tackles in the backfield. Still on his feet after the first down. Trying to get a push from some of his teammates. And they're going to mark him down to the 35-yard line. Good run there by Hudak. Take a look at the replay. He's a little change of pace back. He's not necessarily a power back. He's on a speed back, but he's, he can do a little bit of both. And as we see there, he does a good job. Number 52, Alan Guan is right in there to help push the pile. Michael Finney and Will Conley as well. So good to see the Raiders still looking to drive the ball. They keep it on the ground. Uh, the clock's still rolling, but uh, Raiders still showing some fight here. See if they can punch in another touchdown. Hudak a little slow coming off the field. Hopefully he's okay. He played a bit on the last defensive series too, so he might just need a need a couple play breather here. You got Jordan Mahoney checking back in in the backfield as well. Galvin looking to pass, looking, looking, looking downfield for Panariti, and it's going to be intercepted by Sam Garrity at the 25-yard line. Garrity on the return now, coming back across the midfield, and he'll go out of bounds at the North Quincy 40-yard line. Take a look at the replay real quick here. Yeah, Braintree there didn't send any pressure. They only uh, rushed three, and North was just looking to push the ball downfield there, try and make a big play. Uh, Braintree does a good job. Garrity does a good job uh, playing center field there and then just returns it back out of bounds. Sure, we'll see Braintree try and run off the last five minutes to change here. Uh, Gavin Farrer back in for Braintree at quarterback. See if they start moving some other guys around. Is uh, oh, it's getting some new looks. Some new players in as well. We get a good look there. Number 81 at defensive end, Tommy Wirtz. Mike Ekpobi, D-tackle, along with Noah Baker. Did a good job in the last series. A nice job in the backfield there by North Quincy's Ariel White to bring down number 22, Ethan Ely. And we got another flag. This might be a substitution on the Raiders. They had somebody run on late. I don't know whether they had too many. Or what, but it was thrown by the back judge. Yeah, but we're, we're going to go. Substitution. Five-yard penalty. We'll add it on to the end of the uh, previous spot. It'll be second down. Unfortunately, that's going to back the Raiders up. It was a great tackle there by White in the backfield. He's come on in the third or fourth quarter here. Made a couple nice big plays in the backfield. He's playing an inside linebacker. So remain first down, and the quarterback, Gavin Farraher, had to kneel down to get that ball, and when he re received it, he was still kneeling. So it's going to be a loss back to the 40-yard line. The Brinkley, the past couple drives, had some low snaps, and you know, it's done a good job making him pay for it back on him up. Uh, white again in the backfield looking to make a play. play was down by contact. Number four, Gavin Perry. You see here, Braintree slowing it down. They're going to 
Try and use as much clock as they can. Second and ten. So you see the quarterback there. Farrer is waiting for the back judge to give the 10 second call. Eli gets the handoff and he's going to get run out of bounds there by Nate Sampson, it looked like. No, I'm sorry, that was number three, Marquise Rodriguez Smith. Sampson was on the sideline. A good job, too, there by Tommy Wirtz, senior defensive end, uh, pushing that play to the outside. Marquise does a good job making that tackle. Going to give us about third down and seven. So we got to get, get a good look there at the uh, Braintree huddle along with the North Quincy defense. <laughs> Braintree taking their time as we expected to try to run some time off the clock here as there's now 10 seconds to go. Gavin Farahura, sophomore quarterback. Eli got the carry, spins off one tackler, and flag thrown on the play. He's going to get up to about the 36-yard line before he gets brought down. Tackle there made by linebacker Thomas Chan, Jr. Let's see what the flag is. Holding. Holding. Offense. Coach, you want this? Holding. Offense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, they're down. So they're gonna spot it back at the 46 yard line. Bring the ball back to the 46 yard line. Some of the rated bench here doing a good job uh, making some plays. Third and 16, we'll expect Braintree to keep the ball on the ground here as the clock's rolling. Tick down to three minutes. Braintree's going to keep two running backs. I got number, I think it's number 40 in the backfield, Anthony DeVito. And they give it to Eli, but he was met there quickly by a couple men in the backfield, including Noah Baker, as we see in the replay. Baker and White have done a good job getting in the backfield here. These are the two inside linebackers. You see them creeping up, looking to blitz. Both do a good job getting through, and then uh, number 81, Tommy Wirth, does a good job squeezing it to keep it inside as well. So fourth and long now for the Womps to back on their own 49-yard line. Let's see what they choose to do here. If, I don't know if they got a kicker out there, if they're just going to run this one out. We get the 10 second call. Looks like they're going to bring your coaches right uh, next to the side judge. He's going to call timeout. All right, so time is called with 146 left to go in the game. As you said, the Raiders next week travel in the Malden Catholic. That promises to be a good game. It was a good game last year here at the stadium. Uh, I think it was like 35 to 6. North one. Uh, they had a couple big plays in the second half on the defensive side uh, that really helped them win that game. I remember Nate Sampson had a uh, backwards lateral pass that uh, he alertly jumped on when nobody else really jumped on. He took it back for yep. a touchdown. Um, I know Baldwin Catholic was pretty young last year, um, especially on their offensive de and defensive lines. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, there'll be a good tough test for the Raiders next week, uh, especially going on the road. Uh, interesting as well is that it's a six o'clock kickoff, so that uh, they'll, that'll be a fun drive trying to uh, beat kind of some of that city <laughs> traffic to get know, to the right? other side. That after school slash city traffic. All right, so Braintree brings out their kick team, and bad snap goes over the head of the punter Garroyd Stones, and he kicks it away, and it hits a Braintree defender at their own. Let's see where they mark him down at the 47-yard line. So it's actually going to be a loss of two on the play. So an NF, 
uh, in high school, once it hits somebody else, it's just going to be immediately dead on the spot, I believe. So um, even if one of the Raiders had picked it up after it hit the branchy player downfield, it wouldn't have uh, been allowed. No, 135 here. We'll see if Raiders are going to bring on some new guys here. Number 53, who fortunately is not on the roster, is checking in on offensive line. Ball be spotted at the 47 yard line. Going in for Brody Alfred Baker at left tackle, I think. So in two weeks on September 29th, Braintree will host Quincy High School. Um, that game, a 6 p.m. start as well. So Braintree getting both teams from the city here this year. Galligan passed down the middle and it's incomplete. Was it looks like it was Nate for Sampson. Sampson, yeah. Uh, as you said, uh, Quincy's got Braintree down the line, and it's funny because uh, Quincy and Braintree have played a number of times over the past few years, but North hasn't played Braintree in 60 years. The last time they played was in 1963, which is crazy, thinking how close they are, you know, five, six miles away. Exactly, yeah. Now, I know they've scrimmaged a number of times over the years, um, but going back and seeing that they hadn't played in a while was uh, quite surprising. Martin, I know you are the uh, North Quincy football historian. Um, so I was, I was go just going to ask you when was the last time they played, and you beat me to it because you knew when it was. So. Oh, nice run there by Hudak. Nice block on the inside there from senior number 72, Connor Walsh. Uh, created a nice gap right up the middle there for Hudak. Uh, you see some of the new Raiders there. Tommy Wirtz getting, uh, he was a defensive end on the last series. He's playing some wide receiver now. We see Paul Glenn uh, line up at wide receiver as well on the Braintree side. And a Braintree jumps off sides there. So with the five yards, that should be enough for the first down, and it is. It will result in a Raider first down. Clock is under a minute to go. So it'll give us a first down. Let's see if maybe the Raiders try to throw to the end zone a couple times here, see if they can't pull back one more score before the end of the game. Um, it'll be over the threshold for the power rankings, though, for power-wise, um, but it'll be a good way to kind of end if they're able to get a score here. 14 points for the power rankings, is that correct, Martin? I believe so. I know it didn't change this year. Uh, they voted against changing that. Conley gets the handoff. Trying to find some space. And finally he's going to get brought down at about the 30. They're going to say forward progress at the 35. Did a good job fighting, trying to make something happen. Uh, Rangers just does a good job rallying up to it there. Uh, we'll see if the Ra uh, Raiders choose to run another play. As we tick at 20 seconds here. They might not, might not run another one. It looks like. Looks like they are not going to as uh, Braintree starts to line up here at midfield. All right, so a uh, tough loss here at the stadium for North Quincy. Um, they uh, showed some life and were playing with Braintree in the first quarter. They were back and forth there. Uh, and then Braintree just pulled away uh, and just showed their strength here. Final score, Womps 30 and the Raiders 7. Braintree was just super efficient tonight on the offensive side. Uh, Gerard Stones in the first half, only one incompletion. Jared Curry was a strong runner for them. Um, and every time they got the ball, they were able to either get a touchdown or they had the one missed field goal, but they drove it right down as well. And then they did a good job of pinning the Raiders back. The Raiders were able to string together a couple drives, but unfortunately they only got one score out of it. Um, the Raiders do have a large senior class, but a lot of these guys are still playing varsity football, starting for the first time. Uh, so... I think it's a good game for them. They kind of punched up a little bit in terms of playing a bigger school, a bigger team, a, a playoff team in the past in Division One in Braintree. Uh, so hopefully this test will serve them well down the road. 
All right, real quick rundown some stats. First for North Quincy, quarterback Mikey Galligan, 12 of 25 passing, 212 yards, and one touchdown. Uh, ben Hudak, four rushes for 29 yards. Galligan had 22 yards rushing. Jordan Mahoney, five carries for 12 yards. And Will Conley, two attempts for eight yards. Nate Sampson had one catch for 39 yards and a touchdown. Cam Sampson had three catches for 82 yards. Ben Hudak, three catches for 44. Will Conley had four catches for 39. For the visiting Braintree Womps, Garrod Stones, 14 and 19 passing, 184 yards and two touchdowns. James Curry, star of the show here for Braintree, 27 attempts, 157 yards and two touchdowns. Stones also had 16 yards rushing for Braintree. For the receiving side, Sam Garrity had one catch for 12 yards. Leo Bresciani had one catch for six yards and a touchdown. Kalen Parson Gomes had six catches for 80 yards. Sean Canavan. Five catches for 79 yards and a touchdown. So again, final score here for uh, at Stadium, Braintree 30 and North Quincy 7. Real quick, we're going to run down all the crew here to make this game possible. On camera, we had Ryan McWade and Brian Cox. In our truck, we had Anna El Torre, Chris Potter, and Peter Doherty. And up here in the booth joining me again was Martin Dunham. So, Martin, thanks for joining me up here on the family. Any last thoughts as North Quincy, again, we talked about going to be going to Malden Catholic next week, home after that versus Cohasset, and then Plymouth South and Pembroke on the road before finishing off their season uh, with Situate and Hanover here at home. Uh, the regular season, I should say. We'll see you on the 29th. <laughs> All right, well, again, final score here, Braintree 30 and North Quincy 7. For Martin Dunham, my name is Jonathan Clary, and for all the staff and crew here, for QA TV Sports, we want to thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.